have uh, a short presentation of the, of the Metabody uh, European Culture Project. Yeah, it's uh, a uh, uh, presentation by Hans de Nagal, who is the project coordinator. And thank you, Hans, for, for this uh, presentation to the students. And uh, also, we can have a, a, a flash presentation of GEO, the project, uh, another culture, European culture project which uh, I think is a good, uh, um, uh, a, a good uh, content, uh, interesting content that, uh, for, for all the students and also um, for uh, inter people interested in arts so uh, for the answer week because uh, in, uh, in Metabody it is uh, included uh, some part uh, that has a uh, significant uh, use of arts. So, um, yes, use it. So, thank you, Antonio. Uh, here. Um, so, yeah, the Metabody project uh, is, a, is a five years uh, European project that started last July and Infamous is one of the co organizers. Um, Media and Body and Technia and British and Diversity. Um, so, actually, now it's more than nice, 35 institutions. Because there's some more associated partners have joined. So uh, the project is concerned with, uh, with two main questions. Uh, how is it that our uh, non verbal expressions uh, are uh, undergoing a certain process of homogenization in information society due to uh, the dissemination of standardized gestural uh, languages through, through interfaces through? Um, mass media through courses of um, media that disseminate uh, certain choreographies in the voice or certain satellite ways of expression. Uh, how is it then that we can recover a sense of uh, uh, non verbal expressions as uh, fundamental components of our? Uh, of a cultural uh, substrate, a cultural heritage, and a cultural uh, diversity, and therefore then um, not as um, not as patterns that uh, have to be preserved, but rather as uh, uh, differential ecologies, so to speak. So, how is it that our nonverbal expressions um, are uh, normally, or um, normally that are um, should have the space for constantly? Emerging in differential patterns, so we're not uh, um, tending to the kind of homogenization that they are nowadays. And how can we develop laboratories for um, these uh, diverse or differential um, ecologies of nonverbal communication? Uh, this would be the, the other large uh, aspect that the project would like to explore. Um, so one, one important thing is how is it that in current information technologies have a very reductionist approach to nonverbal expressions. If you see the kind of interfaces we normally use, which are text-based or which are reducing our movements to uh, a very reduced set of coordinates, like for example the ones of the mouse and the keyboard. Uh, well, <coughs> how is it very different from the way we, we interact uh, with our gestural language you know, Conversation or in dance, for example, or in music. Uh, how, how very different is the, the, the subtlety and the richness of movement and gestural language and embodied uh, expression in, in, in music, in dance, or in, or in conversation? Well, um, we would like to, to go deep into exploring uh, new uh, forms of thinking, interaction digitally mediated and also non-digitally mediated that um, attempts to enrich that spectrum of communication rather than impoverish it as is happening nowadays in my opinion. Um, well, this is due to a whole set of, of, of uh, very long histories of how certain technological paradigms have been conceived, like uh, for example how information was conceived in the second Part of the 20th century uh, as a disembodied paradigm, as uh, from 
information I can see just a pattern, as a bodiless pattern uh, that is divorced from, from bodies, from materiality, from context, and from me. This was a very specific account of information defined by Paul Shannon, the Paralabs engineer, um, that was the one that has come through because it, it appears to be the most uh, uh, coherent for certain economic purposes. Um, but there were other accounts of information that were taken into account, uh, all these contexts and me, that didn't have so, so much success. So, um, the kinds of laboratories of, uh, of new forms of embodied communication that we would like to develop will eventually become part of an architecture which is perhaps going to be the first fully interactive architecture ever built, as far as we know. Um, which means that the very physical space of this, uh, this laboratory, which will be like an immersive installation which you mentioned, will be physically transforming in relation to your movement. So we want to avoid this idea that space uh, is uh, pre-existing you, so how is it that you generate space with your uh, own uh, gestural um, expression, uh, your kinetic uh, expression, how, um, so how does this architecture operate like a uh, very um, new sound uh, and transform, transform Instrument. It's like an interactive music instrument, but it's also a spatial instrument. It's a visual, it's a, it's a multi um, multi-sensory instrument for immersion perceptions. You know. It is how to develop the laboratory perception, which will be a pavilion that will be touring through Europe uh, in the fifth year of the conference. So this will be the last stage of this, this process of, um, of uh, experimenting. partners, uh, the, the co-organizers and the associates that there are no um, Well, we can't now go deep into all the aspects of so these huge elements. Uh, we will do lots of theoretical research, uh, the publication will do lots of scientific and practical research and uh, artistic creation, and all sorts of aspects, dance, architecture, um, and transdisciplinary collaborations across all the partners. Uh, for example, then also um, issues like disabilities, we will have a big uh, uh, presence in the project because uh, it's about taking into account the radical differences um, that different kinds of bodies and expressions uh, have or should have. Uh, uh, there the should be a space for, for those uh, differences which are not always taken into account. So, for example, how is it that um, we can work with uh, gestures of uh, people with disabilities um, highlighting their own expressive world rather than um, uh, bringing them into a standardized uh, normative world of expressions. So it's inverting a little bit the traditional logic. We don't want in this case to uh, pretend that there is uh, one single um, uh, form of expressing oneself, that there is a number of, um, uh, let's say, um, universal sets of, uh, of expressions, that how can we uh, deepen our awareness of the beautiful aspects of expression. So though all, the, all that, that uh, in all of us, in, in all of our interactions, not just certain people in certain is escaping somehow switching uh, normative uh, labels. What in our expressions is somehow irreducible to certain normative regimes of, of expressivity and of legibility and of uh, all the things that make us appear to be, uh, well, uh, an acceptable subject in a society. Um, so, um, this irreducibility of, of gesture to emoticons, for example, uh, is something 
they face out of the food. In our culture of emotional reductionism, where we are always, uh, we most of the time, especially in, in social networks, for example, we have to align ourselves with the point. This kind of, of reductionist approach uh, is something we would like to challenge here. Um, as we are more and more aligned with, with, uh, with the atomized interfaces which are reproducing our innocence perspective of labor, um, biometric devices which are capturing bodily data more and more into control networks. So this is a crucial aspect. How is it that the body is actually being more and more put into the forefront of, uh, of uh, interfaces, uh, biometric networks, uh, uh, devices, but always in terms of reducing it to a set of controllable points. This is a crucial aspect of control society nowadays. So the body is actually becoming more and more forefront, and always in terms of reducing it to controllable parameters. Now here in this is why we want to do exactly the reverse movement. How is it that we must that we can generate an understanding of the body and of the movement has to be reducible to control then we must change the whole cosmological framework of how to understand movement, how to understand gestures. And I also, for example, so we'll see later, um, with the Ethics <coughs> project, um, working with influences, how can we highlight the awareness of uh, the indeterminate aspects of our movements and expressions, which I believe are always there, and not, always, not only are always there, but they are crucial for the richness of our communication. So I believe that uh, what gives richness to our interactions is the degree of indeterminacy that is present in, in our movements and gestures. So, um, okay, I think we don't have time now for much more. Um, we can speak more about this later in the afternoon, as for all the partners involved. Um, so this is an audio presentation. Peace.